What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a value viewer's question. Now, before we get started, you guys know that I love you to death, so please do make sure to help the channel out a lot and help me personally for free by just smashing that like button, the little thumbs up button under this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already, and be sure to tell your friends, family, if there's anybody in there who's in academia, as well as your colleagues and students about the channel. So let's go ahead and get started today. Today's question comes from Kieran. So Kieran Newcomb, thank you so much for your question. Here's Kieran's question. Kieran says, I'm a sophomore at a community college and I'll be transferring to the state school at the end of this year. I already have two years of experience in clinical settings. Fantastic. Right, and I want to get involved in research as soon as possible, particularly in the area of substance use disorders and underrepresented populations in the treatment industry. Love it. Since I'm at a community college, actually, give me one sec. So I have an idea for you, buddy. Okay. Since I'm at a community college, I don't have access to professors who are conducting research, so I've applied to several summer research programs. I was rejected from one today, and I'm waiting to hear back from the others. My question is, do you have any advice for students who are in community colleges trying to get involved in psych research? So, this was a question that was posed on a live stream that I did. Uh, I do try to live stream once a week, guys. Uh, being over here in Ukraine, it's been difficult because with the time zone difference, it's a seven hour time zone difference. So, if I were to do like a normal live stream, which I usually do at like 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., it'd be like, you know, one o'clock noon, depending on what time zone you're in in the States. It would just be really hard for you guys to attend. So I haven't done any live streams while I'm here, but I'm planning on getting back to a somewhat consistent schedule when I get back to the States to answer your guys' questions. And remember, I'm planning on building a Patreon. If anybody knows how to use Patreon, like much better than me, who's a total noob at it uh, and wants to help me out, I'd really appreciate it. So you can just send me a message. Um, happy to do something like a you know one hour session for you for one hour of your time helping to get the Patreon set up. So in any case, guys, uh, let's go ahead and get Kieran's question answered. Um, Kieran, it's a great question. I love that you're already thinking so far ahead. I love that you already have the clinical experience. I'm sure that with, with this much passion, that you're already doing a good job with the GPA um, and being able to transfer to the state level school, you know, depending on the state, right? Like in Virginia, usually if you end up going to a Virginia community college, my sister's actually a professor of one, uh, it kind of serves as a feeder for other state schools if you have a sufficiently high grade point average. So the fact that you will be transferring suggests that you do have a good grade point average. So I'm really proud of you on that, okay? So just remember that whether you've uh, been there for one year or two years, right? Remember what the goals are in terms of the five fundamentals, right? Solid grade point average, which is median or average or above for your target program. Same thing when it comes to test scores. When it comes to clinical experience, it sounds like you've got great experience already. Letters of recommendation, make sure that for that person or those people you've been working for in that clinical situation, right, that clinical setting, you have somebody who can write you a really strong letter. Then we need a strong research letter, which we'll talk about in a minute, and we need a strong academic letter. The academic letter most likely will come from your undergraduate academic supervisor. So make sure that you choose wisely in terms of who that will be, especially in terms of if we can figure out as fast as possible here and who your target grad school supervisor will be, that can inform us with regards to who the selection of your undergraduate supervisor can be. So if you're ever interested in chatting about that, let me know. My website's below. You can always book a session. We can talk about it one-on-one, -on -one. okay? So here's the deal. When it comes to getting a academic research position when you're in community college, Really, the good thing is uh, if you are in a location where there are other universities, like four-year universities around, there is nothing wrong whatsoever with you setting up appointments to be able to go to meet with different professors who have labs there, explain the situation, especially at the state-level school, right? Um, and to essentially just explain that you know you want to volunteer your time. You do not need some summer research position where you're going to get paid. You will get into your car. You will drive. You will spend the parking money. You will spend the gas money. You will spend your personal time for free just for that research experience, right? Part of the good part about that, Kieran, is that sometimes you can negotiate things in that. Like you're more than happy to like, you know, give your time. What you're really looking for is to be able to give a poster at a conference that is either nationally or internationally recognized. You are looking for personal connections and you don't know if it would be at all possible, but you just want to throw out there that if there's any chance that you can be a minor author, minor author, 
not first author, not senior author, not corresponding author, minor author on any kind of manuscript, you would break yourself to be able to do it. Okay, Karen? So that's really, those are the things or whatever that we need for you to be able to get ahead. And then obviously you would always already be getting the research um, experience just by getting involved with that. And hopefully if you kick butt there and show yourself to be a real asset, you will also get that research letter of recommendation that you need. And if you have all of that made, you've got the package. I mean, you're going to be doing phenomenally well. Uh, and you will be one of the, the fewer individuals who have done a great job in community college and now will actually get into a wonderful graduate school um, compared to uh, when you take a look at frequency and numbers and these sorts of things. Um, I'm deeply involved in the community college world um, from a nonprofit perspective. And what you see is that levels of enrollment in community college are so much higher than levels of conversion, i.e. moving on to four-year schools um, after getting in associates. And then uh, individuals uh, who you know complete the four-year programs uh, and kind of start in those four-year programs were more likely to go to grad school in the first place. So the fact that you come from the background you come from, you can be such a model, such an example here and for so many people. So I'm really proud of you. So just stay on that path because it sounds like you're doing great. If you guys have any additional questions, put them down in the comments below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.